Hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. So, so we are here. Uh, we are so excited to uh, here with you to talk about Gol Golang and Wazi. So, I'm going to tell you about the agenda. What we want to talk about. So, we'll del delve into um, I mean uh, Wazi and discuss a bit about history about Wazi and how it was added to Golang in 1.21 uh, release. And then we'll start a presentation with uh, WebAssembly architecture and uh, uh, WASI, uh, I mean WebAssembly interface. Uh, we'll go deep dive into WASI, uh, how it works and all. And then we'll uh, go through a little bit more about Golang, like Golang toolchain and Golang ecosystem. Then we'll cover few uh, use cases of WASI uh, in Go application today. Uh, we'll uh, show uh, uh, Golang, I mean, uh, plugin, uh, how we build plugin using Wazi and Golang. And finally, we want to talk a bit about ongoing development in Golang and Wazi, uh, like Wazi Preview 2, and, uh, and the next steps for Golang uh, and Wazi to continue their journey together. So we'll be discussing more about the histories and all. So my name is Rajiv. I'm originally from Bihar, India. And I'm currently work as a software engineer at AP Moller Musk. So I'm a part of platform engineering team. I'm located in Bangalore, India. I did my uh, college in Bangalore, India from JSS College of Engineering, uh, JSS College of Academy, uh, Bangalore. Uh, I, I have a degree in information science and engineering department, um, uh, department. And I started working with Go in 2020. So I was part of um, a program called Google Season of Docs. I did g -Shot with GRPC Gateway. So there I learn about Golang. And obviously, I am an open source enthusiast. I contributed to open source projects and programs like um, Season of Docs, LFX Mentorship, and Summer of Code. I work with companies like Lumo, Redbus, and Echnomize. So in my college dead, uh, uh, days. So I'm here with uh, Ashil. Uh, do you want to tell us a bit about yourself, Ashil? Sure. So my name is Ashil. Uh, I am originally from France. So I'm really happy to have you all here. Uh, but I flew here. I'm based in San Francisco now. Um, I've been a Go developer for almost 10 years. And I started working on the Go compiler in 2023. I do a lot of open source work. Um, I contribute to Wazero, maintain several libraries, some of them that you might be using. Uh, last year, I joined the team that develops and maintains the WebAssembly port of Go. And I'm also the co-founder of Dispatch.run, where we're working on a platform to create reliable distributed systems. So Rajiv and I come from very different places. And we connected online in the Go community and thought it would be nice to come and tell the stories of Go and WebAssembly to a broader audience. So open source is really core to the story we're here to tell. Not only because Go is powered by an open source community, but because it's thanks to this community that the work we're here to talk about today happened. So WebAssembly originated in the browser. It's bytecode that is executed by a virtual machine. Um, the v VM is also referred to as the host or the runtime. And by default, WebAssembly is purely just memory and compute. But the runtime can expose functions to the guest module. And those are called host functions. In recent years, standalone runtimes have emerged, like Wazero, WasmTime, Wasmer, or WasmEdge. And while these runtimes can be used as, uh, as in to run compiled uh, WebAssembly modules, they can also be embedded into existing applications. And this is a very powerful model. Uh, for example, you can write a plugin in Rust, compile it to WebAssembly, and embed it in a Go application. WebAssembly runtime also offer fairly strong sandboxing. Uh, so in some cases, we can even run untrusted code as extensions to our applications. Um, and however, uh, for all these capabilities to work, there needs to be a common interface that's spoken by both the runtime and the modules. And this is the WebAssembly system interface. So from now on, I'm going to abbreviate 
WebAssembly system interface as WASI. And WASI is the ABI that compilers can target to produce WebAssembly modules. And the runtimes implement WASI to provide access to system resources. In a way, um, it makes possible to create very lightweight containers in user space without assistance from the kernel. The host application can choose which environment variables, uh, file system mount points are exposed to each instance of the modules. And there are currently two released versions of WASI called Preview 1 and Preview 2. They are often referred to as WASI P1 and WASI P2. And at this time, compilers that target WASI have mostly implemented Preview 1. So we're talking about fairly bleeding edge technology here uh, with a lot of active development in the space. And like I was saying earlier, we need WASI because we need a portable interface that compilers and runtimes can work with. If we only supported toolchain was the combination of one compiler and one runtime, there would be no need for standard specification. Moreover, a specification for accessing system resources is important because those resources are important. Programs need files, sockets, environment variables, clocks. I mean, I don't know what kind of useful program we can write without those primitives. So now that we have a sense of what's WASI and uh, why we need it, uh, Rajiv, how about you talk us, tell us about Go? Yeah, thank you, Ashil. So let's start with uh, what is Go. So Go is a statically typed, uh, compiled garbage collected language. So the de development started in 2007 at Google, and it was publicly released in 2009 and, uh, um, to, uh, in Google, obviously. So Go is a multi-paradigm uh, primary language oriented towards needs of developing secure and production quality applications. It is language developed and maintained by Google as an open source project, I said earlier. So, so but, but instead of telling you a long story, uh, let me show you an example. So this is a Go program that prints the hello, hello, uh, hello message. As you can see, it is quite simple. Even if you have never looked at Go program before, you will be able to make sense of the code. And this is a value of Go. Go is easy to pick up. Go has rich standard library, advanced concurrency uh, primitives built in in languages like Go routines, channels, and it's also very portable. So uh, it compiles to multitude of targets, including WebAssembly. So this, uh, the Go program is an entry point of Go uh, Go toolchain. Uh, basically, Go toolchain standardizes how developers uh, maintain and build their uh, application. I have listed a uh, list, um, uh, few commands that I use day-to-day uh, -day work uh, with Go. So as you can see, uh, it provides a lot of standard uh, tooling uh, for building, managing dependency, testing, and formatting uh, the code, but also more advanced stuff like CPU profiling, memory profiling. So you can profile the program and optimize as much as you can. But Go is a lot more than a language. I mean, it's an ecosystem of high quality open source tools and libraries that largely contribute to developer productivity. Beyond that, it's also a tool with very wide, with wide breadth of application. I'm mentioning all this because when using Go, the entire tool, tool chain is available when compiling to WebAssembly. So Ashil, how, how about how you tell us how Awaji was developed in Go? Sure. So, since a lot of you here, I imagine, are software developers, I'm sure you're going to enjoy the story. In particular, because you've probably lived through similar ventures before. WebAssembly support was first added to Go in 1.11, and that shipped in 2018. But the WASI compilation target was released last year in Go 121. This is five years and ten versions apart. And that's because Go is, for a big part, developed by its community. And for a while, there weren't enough contributors available to work on WASI. And that changed in 2023 when Johan Brenhorst posted a message on the Gopher Slack asking if anyone was interested in forming a team to maintain the WebAssembly port. 
So my co-founder replied, and a few days later, we had a little group of 14 members ready to pick up the work. But imagine the situation. Four engineers who had never worked together on the Go compiler or runtime. And we picked up an abandoned branch that was started a few years before to add WASI and had massively diverged from upstream. So let me tell you, we weren't necessarily set on a path for success. Our task was first to split out the compiler from the runtime changes so we could submit individual proposal to the Go, um, the Go project and deliver incremental results. We submitted a first proposal to add a compiler primitive called Go Wasm import, which allows developers to declare Go functions as host imports. And a second uh, proposal to add a new compilation target for WASI Preview 1 that we called WASI P1. And as a side note, we heard that more languages are adopting the terms WASI P1 and WASI P2, and I personally really enjoy this cross-language collaboration that we have uh, in the community. So while we were going through the development of WASI P1, a major challenge was dealing with the difference of interpretation of the WASI spec in you know, various languages and compilers. The alternative compiler, TinyGo, uh, which is built on LLVM, had support for WASI for a few years already. So since TinyGo already supported it, I thought, this is great. I could use the combination of TinyGo and WASM time as a reference. However, the file system implementation in, of WASI in TinyGo was only partially completed. So while we were working on bringing WASI P1 to Big Go, I also took a side quest to finish the WASI P1 implementation in TinyGo in order to have a reference I could compare to. But through the perseverance of the team, and after a couple of months, we had the Go Wasm import directive merged in, which we could use to implement WASI P1 in Go. And as we made progress on the WASI P1 implementation, more developers tagged along to contribute improvements. And at this stage, we started getting a lot of support from the Go team as well, and really felt like we were going to pull it off. And finally, the WASI P1 target went live in Go 121, which was released in September of last year. Now, I want to take a minute to thank all the contributors who have participated in creating the WASI P1 port of Go. There's too many. There's way too many, you know, to name them all on this slide, but if you're watching this talk, you know who you are, and you know the amazing role that you took in making this a reality. It's truly a team effort from people who had mostly never met in person. And to me, this is a great showcase of the power of open source communities. And now I'll head it over to Rajiv to tell us more about what we can do with WASI and Go. Thank you, Ashil. So we mentioned uh, that the first edition was a compiler uh, directive, Go Wasm, uh, Go Wasm import, and that is uh, this is uh, how we use it in Go. So the program declares a Go function signature uh, without the body of the function and preceded uh, with the directive declaring the names of Wasm modules and the export fun functions that it links to. So we can pass pointer in a linear uh, program, mem uh, program memory and other primitive types. So, and compilers take care of all the translation to web, web assembly types. As you can see, this is fairly low level directive. Only library maintainers usually uh, care to use it and would, it, uh, would expose higher level API that invokes uh, the imports. So now let's take a look at how we can build Go program targeting WASI P1. So the Go Arc and Go OS environment variables are used to control the target platform. So we set them to WASM and WASI P1 to uh, build WASI module. And it doesn't get much simpler than that to build uh, a Go program with, uh, was, uh, for WASI P1. So in this program, the Go WASM import directive is used underneath uh, by the Go runtime to interact uh, with the host. 
And then we run our program with uh, runtime like Vajiro. We are, uh, I use Vajiro to run this program. We can use any other runtimes too. So we see our, uh, when we run the program, we see our messages uh, in the console like hello Vaji uh, P1. So let me talk about the use cases of Vaji P1. So there are many applications of Vaji P1. I selected uh, this one because it highlights the plugin uh, model of WebAssembly. So Vaji is currently primarily useful for writing plugins in any language that can compile to a Vazem or Vazi and then executed in any language using Vazem or Vazi uh, virtual machines. So there is a project called SQLC, so which generates a type safe code from SQL. And in this project, they need differential plugin to make things happen like SQLC Django, SQLC uh, Python, SQLC Kotlin, etc. So for every release, they extract the Go, Python, Kotlin, etc. Uh, code gen into standalone re uh, respective um, uh, particular language plugins. What I mentioned, like Django, uh, Gen Python, and uh, Kotlin, which are then compiled. Uh, I mean, basically, which are then built using Vazi P1. This allows people to customize the output by forking the particular language plugin, but not the whole repository of SQLC. Go can be compiled both as a plugin and as a plugin runner, like Vazero, for example. In the case of SQLC, they, uh, they can run plugins compiled to Vazi and then uh, write their own plugins uh, to Go and compile them to Vazi. The, the, main, uh, the main reason to, uh, for using Vazi P1 in the SQLC is that um, it's much smaller code change. I mean, I mean, amount of code to change to write plugins. So this is the main reason uh, they use Vazi P1 in SQLC uh, project. So let me talk about the another uh, uh, use case, like uh, we have a cube scheduler Vazam extension. So WebAssembly enables the execution code written in diverse language with a secure environment. And its versatility allows developers to leverage uh, existing, existing code base to uh, Vazam for uh, various purposes. And integrating WebAssembly into Cube Scheduler empowers the extent of um, Cube Scheduler functionality, like, I mean, basically uh, uh, through custom plugins compiled to uh, Vasm binaries. This approach enriches the Kubernetes scheduling capability with necessities uh, to changes to core uh, uh, without changing uh, the core implementation of Cube Scheduler. So by embedding the WebAssembly runtime like V0, and directly, uh, basically directly into scheduler, the process of incorporating the custom plugins became like very streamlined. I mean, uh, configuration-based loading and of these plugins further simplifies the, um, basically further simplifies the custom customization process for users. So today, the I mean, uh, we can extend the Cube scheduler uh, using uh, sh uh, scheduling framework too, but it's not trivial, right? I mean, once you de uh, once you develop your scheduler. Um, and there is additional uh, de deployment and configuration uh, work to get that to integrate into uh, your cluster. And this is not one-time task. It needs to be repeated for every uh, cluster upgrade. So basically the Cube Scheduler Vasm extension project uh, uh, alleviates the burden by enabling the default uh, scheduler to load custom plugins in Vasm. Uh, I said you write this eliminates the challenges like uh, what, uh, what I said, like uh, changing, uh, we don't have to change the core implementation of the Cube scheduler or uh, like that. So additionally, it op also opens the possibility for writing, um, I mean, uh, languages other than Go. So now I will head over to Ashel to tell us about the qualities and limitation of Vazi P1. Thank you. So Go is a language with native concurrency built in. And when compiling to WASI, we use non-blocking file descriptors to integrate with the Go runtime and allow concurrent operations to make progress without blocking one another. This also integrates with other runtime features like timers. So we get access to a very powerful programming tool. A notable absence in WASI Preview 1 is a complete implementation of network sockets which limits supports for key features of the Go standard library like HTTP clients and servers. However, there are WebAssembly runtimes like uh, Wasmer or Wasmedge 
that have introduced uh, networking extensions. Now, although these extensions are not integrated into Go, we can use third-party libraries to leverage them. And these libraries are also great examples of using the Go WASM import directive to invoke host functions. And so now we actually have two Go compilers that can target WASI. So when should we use one or the other? The primary reason to use TinyGo is for the smaller binary size that it produces. If you're shipping code to a browser, for example, this is something that matters a lot. Another reason is that it generally implements features ahead of Big Go. So for example, TinyGo had support for WASI long before Go did. Now, TinyGo makes some trade-offs and it won't support 100% of the Go standard library or the tool chain. So we need, if you need the portability guarantees, this is when you should use the main Go compiler. So to wrap it up, I wanna take a quick look at what's happening uh, today in Go. At this time, two proposals have been accepted by the Go team and are being worked on. The current WebAssembly architecture in Go uses a 64-bit address space, even though all WebAssembly hosts assume 32 bits. So this hybrid model complicates interaction with the host a lot. We're working on addressing this in the new WASM32 compilation target. The second proposal we're working on intends to address one of the current limitations. We're adding a Go WASM export compiler directive that would allow developers to declare Go functions that are exported in the compiled WebAssembly module. And finally, I also want to mention the work that is being done on TinyGo to uh, add experimental support for WASI Preview 2. So Go is becoming a big player in the WASI ecosystem, and we're always looking for more friends to join us on this journey. So if you're inspired, you want to get involved, um, use WASI P1, join the Gopher Slack, and uh, come talk to us. Thank you. We have some time left, so we can take some questions if you have any. Test? Test? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, thank you for your talk. I think it this was uh, really inspiring. And um, if I get this correctly, like the majority or even the entire team which was working on WASIP1 were like first time contributors to Golang. Um, do you have advice to people who like seek their way into Golang contribution um, or like how did you start out actually? So you're asking uh, as an aspiring contributor, like what are the, the first step to take? Um, I think joining the Gopher Slack is great, like getting to know the people, uh, offering help, uh, and also Go has a lot of material online uh, to teach you how to become a contributor. So getting familiar with this as well, and I think there isn't much more than this. Uh, like I say, we're always you know looking for contributors who can help us out. Uh, you can help with documentation, with you know testing, with um, more advanced work that we're doing on the on the runtime. So, whatever your skill set is, uh, I think we you know we can use more hands. Thank you. Yeah, I'd love to hear what what you consider like the biggest challenges in terms of the work that needs to be done. Like, what areas as you go through, or like, is it a lot of work, but it's boring or are there theoretical areas you need to make progress in and I'd just love to hear what you're thinking. Um, 
So you're asking what are like the, the main challenges that we face in the future development of Go and WebAssembly. Um, so like I was saying, WebAssembly, especially the way that it's starting to be used outside of the browser is very new. It almost feels like a very new field of computing. And so there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of unknowns and I feel like the most difficult part is uh, making the right decisions to continue evolving the technology in the, in the right direction. Uh, so that requires a lot of collaboration from different communities, uh, making sure that all the technical choices, especially those that go into the specification, are going to uh, be compatible with the various ways that languages are, uh, are implemented. Um, so mostly, you know, design, uh, I want to say. And um, yeah, I guess that's the main, the main one that comes to mind. Hey, thank you very much for your talk. So I have very little experience with WebAssembly, so it's really, this has been an eye opening, so thank you for this talk. But so as a Go developer currently, if I like go get a package, I would expect it to compile locally. But I saw that Go import statement. How does like a web, how does a WebAssembly module reach my machine for compilation? Yeah, so you're asking about the compatibility guarantees that you get when you target WebAssembly uh, compared to all other regular Go builds, right? Yes, exactly. Um, the entire Go standard library is going to compile. Now, like I was saying, some features aren't available, like uh, networking is only available as an extension through a third party package. Um, most packages out there, unless they have tight dependencies to you know, the operating systems, will also compile and, and run you know, the, the same way you would run them on ARM64 or x86, it will execute on a WebAssembly host. So with Big Go, you get a lot of, uh, you know, the, the experience I want to say is like almost a, as smooth as possible. Um, what I would be looking for is if you want, you know, your use case involves a lot of networking, um, that's where you're going to maybe, tr you know, crumble a little bit more. But like I was saying, there's ongoing development uh, in WASI to address the thing. So in the coming years, hopefully, will have a lot better support there. Okay, thank you. Thanks for your presentation. Um, as you mentioned, uh, Big Go produces quite a big artifact. And I would love to deploy a Wasm Go artifact on, uh, for example, Cloudflare workers. It seems that I have to use Tiny Go for that. Do you think that in the future, Big Go will produce a smaller artifact or, or not? So you're, you're asking about uh, Go producing large WebAssembly uh, artifacts and um, is it going to get better or is Tiny Go the only avenue in the future? Okay. So, so it, the Go, uh, like the, the program that Go produces is large because we embed the entire runtime, we've got uh, garbage collection, right? We support full concurrency. Basically the entire language is, uh, is built into the target. Um, now, when you look at the way WebAssembly modules are used, uh, oftentimes, you know, they are employed in very ephemeral workloads, right? Uh, things like handling, you know, serverless functions. You don't necessarily need this, all this capability, right? When you're, uh, when you're gonna like spawn a module, uh, run, you know, the function to completion and then turn it down. So thinking about, you know, hypothetical changes that could be made uh, if we didn't compile the garbage collector at all in the target for those use cases, then potentially the size would be a lot smaller. Um, so, I mean, this, those are things that we haven't explored, but once again, if you want to contribute, like 
Maybe that's a, an idea to bring to the, the table. Post. Uh, following up on that question, um, are things like uh, WASM GC and various other proposals that are appearing now, do they help you optimize by not having to bring that part of the language into the module? Um, well, when I was talking about the main challenges being around design, uh, this is, I think, an example of it where uh, WASMGC could almost help us, but there's a few key features that are missing to really replace the garbage collector that we have in Go. Um, so today the answer unfortunately is no, but I'm hoping that you know, we, can, we can change that answer in the future. Right, looks like, oh, there's one more. Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, parallel execution, how are we, uh, what's the timeline on that? Is it wa the WASI standard that's stopping the, the progress on that, or is that just implementation? So the, the WASM spec has, uh, sorry, you're asking about can we do parallel execution of uh, WebAssembly, uh, or like directly from WebAssembly, right? Yeah, so in the talk you said concurrency is there. Yeah. Go, but the parallel execution isn't yep. there yet. Yep. There are more tools now in the WebAssembly core specification that open up the door to implementing this type of features, but there are also limitations in WASI. For example, having the ability to create a thread um, that prevent us from using, you know, parallelism directly from, like, in the compiled target. So, progress is being made. It, it will get there. I, I guess that's my, uh, my opinion. Um, but at this time, <coughs> excuse me, at this time, uh, you don't have any sort of, like, API allowing you to do parallel processing. Um, if you're building an application that uses, uh, you know, a WebAssembly runtime for extension purposes, um, you're still free to spawn multiple threads and execute each module, you know, independently. So you get parallelism that way, uh, but you don't get it in Go directly from uh, from the program. Um, hello, uh, about Wasm. There's a thing, but there's multiple runtime and it can be a bit confusing for you as user. So. What, in your opinion, would be like the advantage of WASIP uh, compared to WASP Edge or WASP Cloud? And if I have like a simple application, like a Gene API that's calling a Postgres database, uh, just like a simple container, and I want to transform it into uh, the WASP, which runtime should I go to? I'm sorry, can you uh, elaborate a little bit? As someone, you can choose the runtime uh, yes. for your application goals that you want to try to run as WebAssembly application. Mm -hmm. But what are the, how are you supposed to choose this runtime between okay. the kind of range? Yep. So if, if you're um, just using the, the runtime as a standalone tool, and you're asking like, which runtime should I pick when I want to run WebAssembly stuff, right? Um, I want to say use the one that you know you like. Uh, some of them have you know different features. So if you need a feature that exists in one runtime, that would be an indicator of the the one you should choose. I think what's more, what's going to determine your choice more is like when you use uh, WebAssembly as an extension mechanism. You're going to target like you're going to want a runtime that is in the language of your host, right? Because the integration is going to be seamless. So. Uh, if your host application is a Go application, you're probably going to want to use WASIRO because that's a you know zero dependency Go uh, WASM runtime. Uh, if you're developing uh, you know a Rust host, 
then wasm time is probably a much better choice because it is written in Rust, so the integration is going to be very seamless. So that, that's kind of like the decision matrix I would use.